Is the rookie of the year race a lot tighter than we think? You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Emily Swallow, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. TGIF, everybody, you made it through the work week and you stuck here with us at Locked On Spurs. You guys are the everydayers. What are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at tonight's Spurs Heat preseason game. A slight look back at preseason game number one. Then we'll dig into uh, the upcoming game tonight. And also that rookie of the year race. We got a little taste of it. Wimby and Chet. Is that race going to be a lot closer than many think? We're going to discuss that more with our guest, which I'll bring him on in just a few minutes. Uh, He is Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast. But um, one preseason game down, another to go tonight, that much closer to the start of the regular season. I don't know. Technically, it's the start of the the Wimby era, I guess. Yeah, sure. Why not? But yeah, Wimby. um, Yeah, you, you, you forget... Uh, you know, it's kind of a message to the national media. You know, sure, you, you know, he's all alien, this out-of-the-world player, and everybody's drooling to see what he can do uh, during the NBA season. But I think you got to be a reminder that he plays in San Antonio. There's other guys out there on the court with Wemby. That being said, outside of Wemby, I'm excited. I'm excited for the rest of the guys. I'm going to try to put the Wemby topic aside for a bit. But... I am really excited to see how Devin Vassell excels in another season. He got paid big time. Uh, He bulked up. He talked about that. And now he's looking like he could be the vocal leader of this squad. I am really excited to see him develop to start this new season. There's so many other players that you should be looking at during the Spurs uh, upcoming season. It's not just Wimby. It's it's not just... you know, the, 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 that guy, I mean, I get it, it's him, but you know, there's others out there. And then there's Trey Jones, you know, how's his progress going to be considering that the Spurs may go positionless? How does that impact him? You know, will he be a trading chip down the road? Uh, there's so many guys that can handle the ball from Sohan to Jones, obviously Blake Wesley, Malachi, Devin, the list goes on to Wemby. So yeah, there's so many other storylines for players individually outside of Wimbayama. And I hope that the national media is going to highlight that. We're definitely going to highlight that here on Lockdown Spurs as the season moves on. But there's a lot more uh, reasons to be excited outside of Wemby uh, when it comes to the players in that jersey. You know, you, you look at even, you know, Malachi, how is he going to fit? You know, if he's, if with the players are saying that he's really impressing during the training camp and the practices and the mini camps, you now how is his role going to be impacted? You know, will he get a spike in minutes? Uh, is, look, the Spurs maybe on paper have a um, you know some riches. Maybe it's not gold coins. Maybe it's silver coins that could turn into gold coins. And then what? You know, great problem to have. So, hey everybody, Wimby is the star, but there's a lot more uh, interesting development out of the other players who are not called Wimbanyama. All right, let's talk about uh, Wimby, the Spurs. The Heat, right now with Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast. We'll bring him on. There he is, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the show. Would you believe it, Joe? A little editing magic a little while ago and I had a tech issue. Can you believe that? No, it wouldn't be an episode of Locked On unless you had some type of tech issue, some glitch, something happens to Jeff. I'm surprised he hasn't burned the place down yet. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm surprised your microphone is still working. Your TV in the background is is not falling off the wall. All that good stuff. Make sure to follow Joe on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast uh, and uh, also his YouTube show, Alamo City Sports Podcast. Uh, he'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Joe, did you check out preseason game number one, Spurs Thunder? I did. I checked it out while I was working. Since I work in the evenings, yeah. I have another TV and the other side of the control room here you know and i was watching the game so i was keeping an eye on wemby seeing what he was going to do and it was a it was a a good show and i was excited and i'm sure you know spurs fans were not only excited to get their first glimpse of wemby 
but it was a, a joy to be able to finally watch his preseason game on TV, even though yeah. it was on the horrid Valley Sports <laughs> app, you know, at least it was on yeah. TV and it wasn't on the Spurs app trying to watch it on a little phone or, or a tablet yeah, yeah. and then trying to find a workaround to, you know, go ahead and cast it to your TV or something. I mm -hmm. mean, ridiculous Spurs. Just put it out on YouTube, man. Put it on the YouTube channel. You know, the official Spurs YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, especially for preseason games or meaningless. Yeah. So just, just put them out there. But as far as what you saw on the court, now, look, I, I get it, everybody. We did an episode of the uh, recap with uh, Rudy Campos a couple of days ago. But uh, I've got to get Joe's thoughts here. General, Generally, what did you see from the Spurs in preseason game number one? Well, not only in preseason game number one, but going back to seeing my first glimpse of Wemby live right, at yeah. the Silver and Black scrimmage, one thing that's both what stood out at me in both of these games is the pace at which the team is playing at. They they are playing at a hefty pace, man. They're going up and down the court. They're fast team. They're they're young. Mm -hmm. They're athletic. And the other thing that was surprising to me is the speed and athleticism that Wembeyama displays at oh, being yeah. seven foot three. And his mm -hmm. ability to actually take contact and still finish the play. He's a big guy. And he went up there and he uh, showed that he was able to bump Chet Holmgren and kind of put the ball underneath his arms. He was crafting with it and lay Got it up. Headbutt in. Yeah, dude. I was like, hey, I like that that little that little move by Wemby. The other thing that's kind of stood out with me of, of this team is they're they're a lot better than they were in the prior season when it comes mm -hmm. to defense. Defensively, yeah, this is a better team. Which to me, yeah. that's going to mean more victories because they're, now they're going to be able to win games that are closer being in the past where if they were up in the fourth quarter, you didn't really trust them because another, the opposing team would make a run mm -hmm. or they would fall behind in right. the third quarter real bad. They didn't have good third quarters. I'm sure. just seeing a more well-rounded team better on defense. And it looks like they're going to have uh Wemby there to anchor uh, the offense as well. The offense is going to flow through him. And I'm excited, man. I got to tell you, I'm excited about the possibilities. Now, it might not happen year one, but the tools are there, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then, look, just some general thoughts about the OKC Spurs game, um, you know, not to beat that uh, to the ground. And we'll definitely get into the Spurs heat tonight. But, you know, defense, you hit it on the head. There was nowhere, there was no place to go but up for the Spurs. Yeah. They sucked last year defensively. Bad. So, yay, Spurs getting better. Uh, also, also, too, as much as Wimby showed what he could possibly be doing on nightly basis, which was phenomenal, you, you know, there was Blake Wesley. What really stood out for me was that he was playing with pace. He actually, I actually saw him run the fast break and stop and then look for the open guy versus last year we saw just run the fast break and keep on going. You, you know, yeah. So we, we saw that. Uh, we also saw Trey Jones now. You know, he didn't knock down all his shots, but he was a 10 15 outside shots. He took eight of them, made three. So he's trying to address the weakness in his game. If he can knock down that little mid-range game, just something, Joe, that will help him in year uh well in the season. But look, overall, I'm trying not to make a big issue about it. It's just one preseason game. And yes, Wemby looked phenomenal, but you know, they didn't play their full squad. Uh, that being the Thunder. You know, at times shorter guys were defending him. Lou Dort. Lou Dort was defending him. So you, you know, that'd be like you going against uh, your little niece, you know, up, up, up no, in the backyard. Man. You know, I mean, that's basically what it is. We'll see what happens mm -hmm. with Wemby uh, in preseason game number two. Uh, we don't have the start, start, the starting lineups, but, you know, we'll definitely see, you know, how Wemby uh, adjusts after one game. But all in all, look, a good outing. Yeah, the Spurs lost, but so what? You just want to see how these players mesh. Zach Collins looked good. Malachi looked really good. All in all, it was a good outing from your San Antonio Spurs. Coming up next, we're going to look at Spurs Heat preseason game number two and the preseason home debut of Wimby. We're going to dive into that, look at some X's and O's, perhaps. What does Joe Garcia want to see out of the Spurs in preseason game number two right here on Locked on Spurs? Hey, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 200 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get on the action right now. MLB started. Uh, NFL's on the way. 
you know, it's the NBA seasons are right around the corner. I mean, the list goes on and on. There's no reason for you to not visit FanDuel right now and get their app. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, include player props, spreads, over and unders, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Spurs heat it tonight. I am looking forward to it. And I know Joe Garcia is. He is with Two Shots Podcast. And we're about to dive into tonight's preseason game number two for your silver and black versus Miami. Joe, we kind of touched a little bit about preseason game number one. A lot of positives. Were there some negatives? Sure. You know, Wimby, you know, um, four turnovers, you know, whatnot. You know, Spurs collapsed in the second half. Again, not important. What is important is development and progress so that's what i want to see out of tonight joe is just progress from this team the chemistry getting better wimby perhaps uh doing more wimby stuff you know let's let him get more comfortable with the game let him uh, take on a different defense you know sure maybe miami not will not be at full power and they're not gonna try out their best players in a, in, a, in a preseason game but let's see him continue to adjust and mesh with his team you know what and speaking of wimby and just the spurs in general I would like to see how Wimby handles set calls now in preseason game number one versus the Thunder. Popovich said that they were just freestyling. They were just out there playing. There was nothing set called. Now let's get him used to that, you know, play calls for him, getting teammates involved. I would love to see him perhaps facilitate more, you know, out of the paint just so his teammates can get used to like where they got to be where he likes uh, to pass the ball out, or then vice versa. It's establish him. Where does he want the ball? So for me, Joe, it's just chemistry development I like to see in tonight's Spurs Heat game. What about you? Yeah, you want to see, a, you know, development out of your younger, your younger players, uh, mm-hmm. specifically out of, like, you know, Blake Wesley, you know, Dominique Barlow, Malachi yeah. Branham, you know, and seeing right. how their development has come uh, as far as what they're able to do in the context of a game mm-hmm. compared to prior season. Um, but I'm thinking that what's going to happen, though, in this in this matchup against the the Miami Heat is the Spurs are going to be really pressed when it comes to the interior defense, especially when it comes to the defense uh, defensive presence in the paint. Miami has always played the, the Spurs tough and physical, you know, especially when it comes to the Spurs trying to get easy shots within the paint. Credit to to Coach Spo for what he's able to do and read, you know, right. the San Antonio Spurs and his heated battles with one Greg Popovich. But, you know, I think it's going to be a matchup here of, of the the younger players for each team. I don't expect that the, you know, the the stars are going to play a lot of minutes. I would expect, again, Wemby Yama coming out and putting on a show for the home crowd because they're going to be playing right. at the Frost Center. But beyond your, super, your superstars, you want to see how the complementary pieces are, are actually going to flourish in this game. Because that's really what's going to win you games. It's not so much, yes, your superstars got to perform at a high level. It's the, the complementary pieces, you know, the pieces that are surrounding Wembeyama. I hope we actually get to see a little bit more out of uh, maybe Keldon or or even Jeremy yeah. Sohan since, you know, they were both uh, did not play as DNPs because they were suffering from soreness. They didn't even play right. in the silver and black scrimmage game. So I'm hoping right. at some point Coach Pop will go ahead and give them some run. And I want to see how they're, they're developing as well, you know. It just seems like you know, the mood with, with Keldon's been very solemn. Maybe he just wants to get out and play on the court. <laughs> Jeremy, yeah. he's always fun to watch, man. The kid's always full of energy. You know, I'm, I'm sure that they both want to get out there and play some ball. Uh, and, you know, we got to see the team wish Keldon a very happy birthday. Happy right. birthday to Keldon, which was yesterday. He turned the ripe old age of, what is it, 23, 24 years old? Yeah, I mean, he's old. He's old. I, I've got it. To be 23 again, no, woof, that would be awesome. I know, but man. You you mentioned uh, my, my, you know, a point here that I had on my list right now. I was looking at it. Uh Point number two for me is getting Sohan and Keldon involved. Not necessarily, yeah. again, with meshing with Wimby. Now, that's going to be important, but also just meshing with the team. And I would love to see Jeremy at the point uh, for a while if he does play again. We're recording this, uh, you know, before the if any injury list comes out. Yeah. So if, if Keldon and Sohan play, that's going to be very key, not only for Wimby's development, but for their development with you know, meshing with him. And also, too, just to get Keldon and Sohan some run out there versus a team and not their own players in practice. You know, just another team and see how they will be. You know, also, too, I want to see Blake Wesley continue that pace control 
You know, he's not going like flash from the DC universe all over the place, you know, no stopping. You know, I want to see him continue doing that too. And you know what? For Trey Jones as well, keep keep shooting. Keep shooting. Get used to it. Knock it down. Look, these, these stats don't count. They're, these wins and losses don't count right now. Keep on trying to work on your outside game. But I would also like to see Mamu get run, a lot more run. I think that's going to be an interesting situation for the Spurs with the bigs right now because we know it's Zach and Wemby. It's, you know, they're going to be the two headed the monsters in the paint. Okay, got it. But then it's after that. How does Mamu going to fit in? How's Bassie going to fill in? Maybe Barlow, you know, I'll fit in as far as bigs. So Bassey, I like what I see out of Bassey. I would love for him to be the uh, third big on the roster. But Mamu, Mamu is a different uh, beast. <laughs> he can pass. He has a little bit more flair to his game. You know, which player, which big is going to prove themselves more to earn more minutes backing up Zach and Wimby? Or, you know, dare I say, get buried on the bench or Joe perhaps get assigned to the G League. Your thoughts? Mamu is going to be an enigma, man. I don't know if there's going to be enough playing time to go around yeah. for Mamu. I think what's going to happen with Mamu is he might be looked upon as a third option. And that third option means you're going to be sitting on the bench and you'll get some minutes, but it's going to be very limited minutes. Mm -hmm. He is the fan favorite. You know, when he comes out, he, he plays at a high level. You know, he's full of energy and the fans get excited, much like they did with Boban, you know, when he was a member of the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. Everybody screams, Mamu, Mamu. But beyond that, you know, I think Mamu knew what his role was going to be coming right. into this, this particular season. He just wanted to be with the team. He likes it here. You know, he made that clear. Um, but I would like to see him get some some opportunities. And I think he will as the season unfolds, you know, because Coach Pop, they can't. The NBA frowns upon load management. But the stipulation is you have to have all stars on your team. Somebody yeah, who went to the all stars. Yeah. That doesn't really apply to the Spurs. So, Coach, I know. Might, you know, go ahead and take care of that little, you know, gray area there and go ahead and use the load management to his benefit. And if he doesn't sure. decide to do that, of course, Mom was going to be called upon and, you know, enter the game and, and probably put up a, a good showing for the fan base. But he is an enigma, man. He's he's going to be one of these guys that's going to be the third option, be right in the bench most of the season. But the good thing is now that we have somebody like Mamu on the team, he can impart his knowledge to the younger younger players and still be able to contribute to the team. So I, I like him, man. He's a fan favorite. I think this is going to apply to every preseason game um, until the regular season starts, Joe, yeah. is this. And another thing I want to see out of tonight's game is if Wimby is cooking for a quarter, quarter and a half, shut him down. You're done for the game. That's Three it. Three minutes, man. <laughs> Sit him down. That's what I want to see. Yeah. Or, 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 or he even just – trips and he's fine he pops up right. he's okay there's nothing wrong with him just the fact that he if he falls sit him down don't want to risk it you know so i definitely would like to see when we get some burn get a sweat out there but at the same time i don't want the spurs i would hope the spurs uh don't uh run him to the ground and again in a preseason game yeah. it doesn't matter so put him out there for a quarter quarter and a half we'll give, we'll give him a half but that's it keep him Keep them uh, nice and healthy before the start of the regular season. I don't want, I mean, can you help? Can you imagine Joe knock on wood? You know, he gets hurt in a preseason game. Good yeah. Lord. That's, that's the thing is that yeah. you want him to, to play, but at the same time, coach pop has to be careful on yeah, how he's it's a delicate balance. Yeah. yeah. yeah so one of the you don't want to I shut him down, but I'll, you want to give him burn. Yeah. What I was going to tell you, one of the things I saw that really stood out to me about Wembyama, he's very, conscious of where he's landing because he knows Got that him. he doesn't want to mess up his ankles his his knees his feet in any way when he jumps up he's very conscious of being able to come down on two feet mm -hmm. and he's very careful of where he's going like he doesn't want to roll his ankle by stepping on somebody right. else's foot uh, and one of the things that i do see about when he's playing in the context of the game as well he doesn't have he doesn't explode with that length you know like he I guess he he could. He's very controlled in that manner because he again, I think he's very conscious of of him coming down and getting injured. I saw that especially in the silver and black game. He went up and he was just playing around, you know, during during warm-ups and even when he was coming down, he was coming down on both legs. He didn't want to come down on just one, even in the right. context of the game itself, coming down on both mm -hmm. legs, making a conscious effort by even looking down at the ground as he's coming down, you know, to make sure, hey, man, I'm not going to hurt myself. So, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. He He's one of those players that's so long. I mean, it's hard 
you know, for him not to kind of, you know, bang bodies with somebody because of that length. So, yeah, Absolutely. man, give him some some run, but not too much run, yeah, Coach. Yeah. Pop. Not too much run, Pop. Not too much run. Again, it's a preseason game. Yeah. These games don't count. All right. Uh, there's your Spurs heat uh, quick look and what we want to see out of the uh, San Antonio Spurs tonight. Uh, what do you think? Uh, let Joe know on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. Let me know on the Lockdown Spurs YouTube page. Uh, leave your comments there because uh, we'll likely have an episode where we we'll read those comments left on that YouTube page. Coming up next. Is the rookie of the year race a lot tighter than we think? We're going to get Joe's opinion and my opinion on that right here on Lockdown Spurs. But first, we got to talk about Muslinger's Drive Through Coffee, proud local sponsor of Lockdown Spurs and the first ever as well. They are located at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. That's in the 281 area. You're in San Antonio. Open every day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Joe's wanted me to hurry up so he can go get himself a drink before he starts uh, his job. Uh, Make sure to go there right now. I know, Joe, you go there uh, uh, quite often, right, to pick up yourself a quick drink. I'm actually going to be over there probably sometime this week. Um, so I might stop by. Maybe I might indulge in some uh, the of the new drink that they have, the Money Bags drink oh, no. the, oh, no. with the Golden Chalice. I, I don't think anybody is going to be dumb enough to do that. Look, nope, I'm not saying you're dumb, Joe. I'm not saying that you can't afford it. I'm, one of my point is, like, you're financially wise not to spend that. Right, Joe? Please tell me you're not going to do it. I don't know. I might might be over there checking uh, it out. So let me see the goblet, man. I want to look at it. In case you don't know what Joe's talking about, they have a new drink called the Money Bags. It's ninety nine dollars. I'm not kidding, and it comes in a bronze goblet. Not kidding, Joe. As a matter of fact, he didn't believe me when I told him about the goblet. You're like, I don't believe you, Jeff. I don't believe you. And he had to see for himself. And he got back to me. He's like, Oh yes, it is right. It was like freaking goblet on it so go check it out aside from that drink they have the ogoj which is the orange julius recreated only at muslingers drive through coffee they have the sub-zero made in honor of utsa's qb frank harris they have the alien that's inspired by victor wimbayama full can of red bull kiwi green apple mixed together very good they got the red bull infused lightning bolt series that'll get your day going i'm pretty sure joe's gonna need that in a few minutes when he starts to clock into work uh, that'll power him through his day. Or you could just try the Muslinger. That is their signature coffee. They have dairy alternatives. Joe, they got mini donuts. You love those donuts, don't you? Yeah. You know what I told you, man? I like to dip my donuts in a little something, something, you know, <laughs> eat those, you know, take the edge off a little bit. So, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. All right. Don't don't let the work know that you're doing that before you uh, log on. Hey, man, they, I work from idea. home. So how are they going to know? <laughs> <laughs> Who's pushing his luck? Um Again, over 300 five-star reviews cannot be wrong. you got to go there right now. Friendly staff, great menu. As mentioned, those dairy alternatives. Uh, you can find them on social media, on TikTok, uh, Instagram, threads, Twitter, slash X. Uh, the list goes on and on. Facebook, you can find them at Muslinger, S-A-T-X. That's all one word. Again, we thank you for making uh, Muslingers your first choice. San Antonio, when you got to get yourself a cup of coffee. Why? Because life is too short for bland coffee. Hey, everybody. This is Nathan Ray Clark from Criminal Minds and Modern Family. And you are listening to Locked On Spurs, hosted by Victor Wimbiana's new best friend, Jeff Garcia. Let's continue our chat with Joe Garcia, Two Shots Podcast. And Joe, we kind of got a little sneak preview of what could possibly be quite the must-see games between Chet Holmgren and Victor Wimbanyama, two players that are high in Vegas odds when it comes to walking away with the Rookie of the Year award. But recently, Joe, the NBA released their GM poll, and GMs think, well, 50% of GMs think that Wimby will be the one walking away with that award. Joe, why do I think it might be a lot closer than we think that Wimby's not going to win it by a landslide? Because we're also forgetting about Scoot Henderson. You know, he might have something to say about it, too. Joe, do you think that race between him, between Wimby and Scoot and Chet and, you know, you think it's going to be a lot closer than we think? I think so. I think you're going to have some of the other players, too, that have maybe yeah. were picked further down in the draft. They might have surprising oh, like seasons. Brandon Miller you know? or some of that. Important point in, in, in case here, yeah. maybe Grady Dick might have a good season here. You know, he's a good shooter. So we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll see, you know. Again, you have also, you also have Brandon Miller. You have the Thompson twins, but I don't know about oh, yeah. them. I think they might be a little overhyped. But, you know, you have other players that are have been picked further down in the draft that might have surprising seasons. 
So it's yeah. not all going to be about Wemby. You're going to have other candidates as well. And one of those is definitely going to be Chet Holmgren. And yeah. the other thing is that you saw a little bit of shade thrown at each other. You know, there was respect there, but it was like, yeah, yeah, what's up, bro? You know, what's yeah. up? You know, like, that, they have a little bit of history already. Yeah. You know, Chet got the best of him. What well, Team USA and Chet got the best of Wemby in France in, a, in a, an Olympic uh, game uh, setting. So there's that. I mean, technically, Chet won the battle and the war in a preseason game. Yeah. Uh, the team won and then I think just nudged uh, Wimby in, in stats. But again, doesn't matter. Yeah. I think, Point is, I think they know. They know. They're going to be know. up against each other. Yeah. So I'm, this is one of the awards that I'm most excited about is that rookie of the year award chase. Yeah. You, know, you pretty much pencil in your obvious player for MVP or. Coach of the year, probably within two months of the three months of the NBA season. But when it comes to the rookie of the year, you don't know because, like for Scoot Henderson, that's a massive rebuild that they're doing in Portland. He doesn't have to worry about sharing the ball with Dame anymore or at all, period. He's not like he ever did. But point is, is that it's going to be all him. So he might have those inflated numbers. And then there's a uh, chat. Uh, if OKC has a better season than the Spurs, perhaps he'll get the nod. Brandon Miller, how is he going to fit in all this? You mentioned Grady Dick. So this race is going to be super tight. I still believe Wimby will walk away with it, but I think when, they sh when the NBA shows the final vote tally, I think it's going to be a lot closer than we think, Joe. I think it might be. You know, I think the the fan favorites here right out the gate is going to be Chet Holmgren and, and Victor yeah. Wimby. I'm a Spurs fans are going to be partial to Victor just like me. You know, of course, yeah, sure. you want your yeah. boy to win, you know, yeah. so. I think it's going to be between them and, of course, you'll, you'll have some other candidates thrown in the in the mix there. But mm -hmm. I think Victor really wants to win the Rookie of the Year. He's going to come out and make a statement. And we saw him in the first preseason game, 20 points. You know, already he had yeah, a great well. going, you know. So I'm expecting more of the same from him in this Miami uh, matchup as well, the Miami Heat matchup that the Spurs are going to be you know, having on Friday here in front of yeah. the home crowd. That's the thing. In front of the home That's crowd, you want to do yeah. good at home, you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I think tonight's game might be packed for a preseason game. I can see that happening. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. It's yeah. not going to be like it was in the in prior season, you know, where you had yeah. empty seats galore and they were like $15, $10. They practically yeah. you could give them away, you know, but now, now it's not, a not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. First fans getting cheap for full season, not anymore. So, yeah, overall, I, I think uh, I do agree with you, uh, Joe, the uh, Roy race will be a lot closer than we think. Unless, we'll, not even that. He, Wimby puts on the show that he did versus OKC, fine. But Chet, you know, put on a show too. So, uh, you know, what maybe could help uh, Wimby if the Spurs are struggling this season is yeah. that he's just Wimby and all eyes are on him. So if he razzle-dazzles nightly, you know, that could sway some votes. So we'll see. We'll see. But I, I agree. It's going to be a lot closer than we think. Hey, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you think about tonight's Spurs Heat preseason game? What do you want to see from your silver and black? And is the Rookie of the Year award race a lot tighter or going to be a lot tighter than we think? Joe, tell us what's going on in Two Shots and, and your YouTube show, the Alamo City Sports Podcast. Yeah, the Alamo City uh, Alamo City Sportscast. Yeah, Jeff always has a hard time sportscast. putting sportscast and podcast together. It's the sportscast. Yeah. <laughs> Alamo City Sports. Is that cast. the new thing now? The sports cast? Yeah, man. That's what it is. You know, it's a sports cast. We keep it puro there, man. So we we go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And it's just like, you know, you, you're pulling up to a bar, having a, a drink or two with your buddies, and you're just talking sports and whatever else. Me and Jeff were there the other day. He had he was a guest on the show, and we're talking about the video he put up with the sighting of Bigfoot. So we go off the rails and talk about different things, a little bit of pop culture, yeah. sports, and we keep it lively and fun, you know? So go ahead and make sure you tune in. We usually go on at noon, but since I'm starting work at noon now, we're going on from 10.30 oh. to about 11.30. Sometimes I go over a little Thank bit to about 11.30. 45 but with the two shots podcast season's coming up so we're going to go ahead and start recording episodes on a weekly i'm trying to go ahead and try to make it more than just a weekly maybe maybe twice a week but i know that on a this coming episode that we're going to have we might have the one and only jeff garcia make an appearance here and he's going to talk maybe. to us about antonio spurs maybe maybe, maybe. maybe. we'll see if you're here in the studio i might order a steak 
who knows? Maybe Joe might have a double appearance on Lockdown Spurs today and Monday. So we'll see. We'll see we, if Joe pulls the back-to-back defense of the co-hosting seat right here on Lockdown Spurs. Hey, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, Kids 5 Plus app, YouTube. The list goes on and on. You guys are the everydayers. We'll be back Monday likely to look at the Spurs after the Spurs heat game, uh, more silver and black, whatever comes out from your beloved NBA team. We'll talk about it right here on Locked on Spurs. So for Joe Garcia, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.